Hello, it's Andy again from the EgoCast channel, and it has been a really interesting day in the news. Here we go. Another tragic story that we've been following, that 14-year-old little girl that was allegedly raped in the bathroom of her high school. It's Rockville uh, High School, which is in Maryland. Wait, 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 wait. I thought nobody's ever been attacked in a bathroom before. Oh, no, wait, that's only by trans people. Yet people still get attacked in bathrooms. Hmm. And, uh... The two illegal immigrants that allegedly raped her. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. Two illegal immigrants raped a woman or a 14 year old girl in the bathroom. It's like the conservative trifecta. Holy shit. They, they were caught on the border. They were allowed to stay in the country. Many people are wondering why. Well, I don't know. Was it in a sanctuary city? This never would have happened if they, if they, um... It enforced the laws on the books. If, if the laws were enforced. <sighs> we just don't want to punish criminals anymore. It's so weird. That's right. And, and if you're watching other networks, you haven't seen much coverage of this story. But if you watch Fox here, here on Fox and Friends, and last night on Tucker Carlson's show... You know, that doesn't really surprise me. This doesn't seem like anything that CNN wants to touch at all. Because... Holy shit, talk about making the argument for you, right? He had on one of the attorneys representing one of those illegal suspects and really grilled him the way only Tucker could. So here's a montage of that interview last night. See, I had, I had for the most part, I liked the interview. But there, I had a couple of problems with some of the questions that Tucker asked. And luckily enough, most of them are included here. So here we go. So be honest, would you be comfortable having your 14-year-old girl in class with this guy? I want nothing but safety for my children, their friends, my family, and everyone in my community. Right. Well, okay, we all do, but that's not answering the question. This specific guy, your client, would you feel comfortable having a loved one go to school with him? I, I don't know him. I, I literally don't know him. See, like, it's the dude's defense attorney. <laughs> He's entitled to a defense attorney, I believe. I mean, not entirely sure. He's not a citizen, but I would imagine somebody's gotten him a defense attorney in some manner or another. So he asked to defend him. Like, even the surefire loser cases, they, he's got to defend them. He can sit there all day long and go, you got to make a plea or this is just going to go really, really bad for you. And if they say, no, we're going to fight this, even if it's a surefire loser, somebody has to defend them. It's that's that's our law. It's 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 the way it works. So this is really unfair, really, really unfair for Tucker to do this. But I mean, I, I think that's something you would think through since you're going to be arguing in public on behalf of this guy. And so doesn't his character, his, his capacity or not to do something like this, does that enter into it? Do you think, you know, is this guy guilty or not? Is that a consideration for you? Yeah, but he's a defense attorney. They're not all not guilty. People commit crimes, but they still get a defense attorney. And if they're too stupid to make a fucking plea deal and they demand to go to court, somebody has to defend them. Like, th this is kind of bullshit. Everything's a consideration. I'm sure there could be a number of questions asked about all three of the people involved in this. And see, that was just a, that was a, that was a bad direction for him to take this because he's, he's not doing himself any favors. Obviously, Tucker's decided that he wants to browbeat this guy into not wanting to fucking defend this dude anymore or whatever. I don't really know what Tucker exactly expects this guy to say. Like, his defense attorney isn't going to go, well, fuck, I think he's guilty. Or, oh, hell no, I wouldn't want my child to be in school with this fucking illegal rapist. The guy's not going to say that. It's his fucking defense attorney. He'll lose his job. He won't get to defend anybody else. Ever. So... This is kind of unfair. This is really unfair on Tucker's part. This is not good. What would the questions be raised about the 14-year-old girl who says 
that she was raped in the high school bathroom and apparently whose screams were heard by her classmates. Man, you better be right about this because if you're going to be impugning the character of a 14-year-old girl who says she was raped... What else can he do? If there's no possibility of a clear alibi for the, for the two guys, what else can they do? There's no other defense. They have to mount a defense of some sort. So the only thing you have left is attacking the character of the girl. It's, it's, it's where all of the fucking stereotype of, well, if I say I was raped, then somebody's just going to say I deserved it because of what I was wearing. It's from these cases. When they go to trial, it's the only defense. There isn't any other defense. What else do you argue? Other people say they heard her screams. I mean, to impugn her character, I mean, you really, before God, better be sure that you're on the right side of this. That's just very unfair, man. Like, for the most part, the interview was pretty good, but getting in there towards the end, man, it just, it fell apart into just berating this poor fucking guy. I mean, it's his job, man. Like, it's your job to report the news, even the distasteful stuff. It's his job to defend the clients, even the obviously guilty ones. They still get a defense. It's the way our country works. So, that was very unfair. Well, I wonder if he slept well last night. Probably fucking not. <laughs> I know Tucker Carlson did, though. Some great questions. Tucker is here with us this morning. Good morning, Tucker. Good morning, oh, Tucker. Good morning. Morning. morning, Tucker. How you doing? Uh, how do you think he handled that last night? I mean, you know, he's in a tough spot. Uh, but I always wonder that about defense lawyers. And by the way, I'm in favor of defense lawyers. I would want one if accused. I don't know, man. After the way you just treated that defense lawyer, you better hope one that get never fucking seen that interview, man. Not everyone accused is guilty, but I still think... There is a human and moral element to this. If you're going to represent somebody, you know, I think it's fair to ask the person representing him, you know, do you feel good about it? No, that's not fair. Because what kind of answer do you think you're going to get? They're going to lie and say, of course, my innocent, my, my client is the picture of innocence. Because what else do they have? <laughs> like, it's, it's actually a really useless question to fucking ask. Because you're never going to get a defense attorney that's going to go, oh, I think this asshole's guilty as fuck. Never going to happen. It's a defense attorney. They lose their job. And they're all just going to say, oh, yes, of course. It's a stupid fucking question to ask a defense attorney. And by the way, he said last night that he planned to attack the accuser. Well, okay, that's a common tactic, but she is 14. And there's a lot of circumstantial evidence that she's not making it up. These cases can be complicated. This seems a little less complicated than most. So that's just, yeah, that's just rough. That, that poor guy that they got to go on that show with him. Oh, I feel bad for him. He probably went in the next work, the, the, the work the next day, and they probably threw him a little party. Like, hey, man, thanks for taking that one for him. That was a big stiff cock. <laughs> and so I, I, I just couldn't resist asking him, really, you're going to attack a 14-year-old girl who says she was raped midday in a bathroom? Oh. <sighs> This is just so bad for so many causes. Speaking of causes, where are all the protests? Where are all the anti-illegal immigrant protests going on? What happened? You know, you know what's really sad? While that poor 14-year-old girl was getting raped by two illegal immigrants, there was probably protesters somewhere in an airport holding a sign saying, Immigrants welcome. Or on the fucking border holding a sign saying, Immigrants welcome. And, on top of that, there was probably some fucking trans idiot sitting out there with a fucking sign going, We should be able to use whatever bathroom we want. Like, oof. This is just, no wonder Fox is the only news company that's talking about this shit. 
That just looks bad for the narrative no matter where you are. I think that was an excellent, I'm so glad you did that. I was watching last night, I'm like, go Tucker, go. That's great, as a mother of a little girl. But yeah. also, some, some of the attorneys, another attorney I saw on a, earlier last night, was saying that the, the little girl, it was consensual. And I'm thinking, consensual? She's 14 years old, it's yeah. still illegal. <sighs> what else do you have? <laughs> Like, seriously, think about it. These are your clients. An 18 and a 17-year-old, both illegal, right? Raped a 14-year-old girl in a bathroom. You're their defense attorney. Y you have to do it or you lose your job. Well, what do you say? How, what kind of a defense can you possibly mount for, for them? That's gotta, man, that's gotta suck! Well, it's, it's, a, it's a hard argument uh, to buy. I mean, it's, I mean, let's be honest, it's disgusting, actually. Um, right. I mean, there are a lot of, you know, a lot of circumstances you could bring up that may be mitigating. I don't know. But to lay it on her? Yeah. Yeah. They're, this is this is your Kobayashi Maru. Somehow you got to fix the game. I don't know. It yeah. really seems um, a bit much. And by the way, they're also making the case that the, this kid's, both kids' immigration status had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Hmm. Here comes the really sad part. Like, here comes the really, 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 really sad part. It's so sad. But of course, I mean, it had everything to do with it. Absolutely. We wouldn't be talking about this if these people had been deported as the law demands in the first place. And they weren't. And they weren't for political reasons, as you know, because we don't enforce the law because there's a lot of political pressure not to enforce it because of uh, ethnic politics. See that? There you go. The real cost of ignoring criminals. The real cost of thinking that there are people that are above the law just because of some arbitrary ass reason. Some 14 year old girl has just had her life ruined. Like the, the ripples of this pebble in the pond are going to spread through decades of her life, probably. So... Y'all motherfuckers need to screw your heads back on, right? Pay attention to what the fuck's going on around you. I mean, Jesus Christ. And, and that doesn't serve Americans at all. No, but your interview last night did, uh, so well done on that. We've got to get your take on another story we're covering this morning. A potential smoking gun, intelligence reports uh, revealed today from the NSA could prove that the Obama administration spied on the Trump transition team yeah. during that time period, November, December, January. Obviously, the president made the wiretapping allegations. Devin Nunes now comes out and says he may have evidence. What do you make of this developing story? You know what I make of it? <laughs> like, man... Donald Trump is not a fucking idiot. No matter how many times you guys want to call him a fucking idiot, no matter how many times his tweets seem to make him look... Uh, dude, you don't accuse the former president of the United States of such a gross infringement on the freedoms of the citizens of the United States without some sort of decent evidence. And it's not just Alex Jones or Fox fucking news. Like... <sighs> well, I mean, there's no question they were spied upon because they were the subject, some of them, apparently, of an investigation. And investigations imply surveillance. So, yeah, it happened. There's another take on it, too, that I had previously not thought of. The question is why and how is that information treated? And it seems at this stage, judging by the remarks of the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, that their names were not redacted. They were, as they put it, unmasked in documents that were spread throughout the Intelligence Committee, which, by the way, is huge. And that's against protocol. We are 
truly living in the most unimaginable, <laughs> unbelievable time probably in existence. Like, I imagine if you were some hero of old, you probably had a pretty interesting life, but Jesus Christ, everybody gets to watch this shit now. All you have to do is turn on the news. It's so crazy. That is right there a big deal. The U.S. government right. has the capacity to spy on its own citizens. It does. There's almost no backstop against it. It does not require a FISA warrant. That is not true. And I actually looked that up. And it's actually interesting what the FISA courts really do. Like, and, and how kind of easy it is to get a FISA warrant nowadays. Because it's all... Like foreign intel, it's foreign intelligence surveillance. Something, a something, but so pretty much what you got to do is you go to the the FISA court, and you say, hey, we think this person's dealing with Russian spies, and they go tap them. Like that, that's kind of what it sounds like they do now. So, and it was set up that way because. It was a hell of a lot easier to, like, fake probable cause than it would be to fake a national incident. But since we've gone back to the fucking 40s, 50s, 60s with the red threat, everybody thinks everybody's fucking a Russian spy. Or fucking a Russian spy. Uh, like... So now they just gotta go, hey... We think they're dealing with Russian spies. And they go, tap them. Like, it... Woo! Like, the more you dig into it, wheels within wheels. Love politics. Politics is so much fun. Ah! And this is much more common than we understand. If it's misused, if it looks like this stuff is political, if one administration is using its surveillance powers for political ends, you know, there's almost nothing worse than that. And right. so we should stop the partisanship. It's not about Trump's tweets you know, or Russia. I mean, maybe those are real questions, but this question, is the U.S. government misusing its power to hurt its own citizens? I know I'm certainly interested in the answer to that question, but we won't get it tonight. What we will get is, I mean, we started off with just terrible injustice. Two illegal people that weren't handled properly by the law because of fucking identity politics. But now we're going to see how identity politics can really help you. Crimes that that just have to be stamped out because my god, what would our world be like? If everybody could just do this. Blue Lives Matter's flag forced down over complaints that it is racist. The Homeowners Association in St. Johns County in Florida denying the owner's request to keep it even though her dad is a cop. And the flag has been up there for years. They told her they'd received a complaint that it was considered racist and offensive. We've got black officers, Asian officers, you've got every, every race. I mean, for them to say it's racist, blue's not a race. I mean... It's the furthest thing from it. Wow, his daughter is now appealing the rule. Every single one of you out there that could be described as a busybody. All of you people that can't keep your own beeswax. Everybody else's beeswax is all minded while your beeswax is all falling to shit. Y'all motherfuckers just need to take care of your own beeswax. Because you're assholes.